Hi guys, my name is Rachel and welcome back to the Sorry Girls. On this channel we do all things DIY, design, and today you guys asked for it. You wanted to see me make over more spaces in my home and boy, does my bedroom need a lot of help. I mean, it has a great starting point because it's a blank slate, but by blank slate I mean it's literally blank, like it's white, everything in here is white, so it definitely needs a little zhuzh, a little je ne sais quoi. I hope I said that right. I mean, let's get started. I should do a little whoop. Okay, and <laughs> I am exactly where we left off. My plan for this bedroom makeover is to incorporate wainscoting, which is a combination of decorative moldings to give the room an overall classical feeling. To balance out the moldings, by using decor, I plan to mix in some mid-century design elements or really whatever I can get my hands on at the thrift store. Whenever I design spaces for myself, I prefer to rely on neutrals, but definitely want to add in splashes of color. When I look around my room, everything is pretty much Ikea, so while I have great bones, it's definitely lacking a lot of personality and that is just not cutting it for me. I don't think it is any secret on this channel that I really enjoy clothes and fashion as well as DIY and designing and building and all that stuff. And with that being said, in an ideal world, I would have a walk-in closet and all my clothes would be laid out organized and nicely, and they are, but I live in a two bedroom apartment in Toronto and I don't have a walk-in closet. But what I do have are these bifold closet doors. And what I did is create an extension of that closet all down this wall. It takes up a little chunk of the bedroom, but for me, it gives me that walk-in closet feeling and it was just so worth it. My boyfriend's clothes are all in the second bedroom. He's fine with it, I'm fine with it. Don't worry about it. I have a lot of clothes. So from Ikea, I got this customizable closet system and they have a bunch of different options, but the one I'm using is called the Ardal. I think I'm saying it right, A-U-R-D-A-L. And you know what, it adds up pretty fast. I think this like all could have been like almost $200 for just this piece and the bars. So instead of getting two of those, what I ended up doing is buying a Billy bookcase for the second stack of clothing. The only problem is since the Billy bookcase is a little bit slimmer than the Ardal, what I had to do to connect them is just instead of it being horizontal, I connected it vertically and it's a pretty seamless connection. That's my first like mini hack I think. What I do want to add to the closet is like an integrated lighting system which you can also get at Ikea. That way I can also have like some nice light bouncing off the walls and illuminating the closet and all my precious, my precious is. Last thing I'm gonna to touch on in my closet area is adding trim slash molding to like the inner parts of the door. And what it's gonna do is give it this like wainscoting look, which adding this kind of texture is just gonna give the whole room a lot more class and character, if you will. I also wanna do the same trim slash wainscoting to my bed. I have to be honest with you, this bed frame bores me to my core, but since I can't fit a dresser in here, the appeal is that they have these trundle drawers underneath. So with that being said, I'm still in need of a side table and because of the way that the trundle drawers are, they come out where the side table technically should be. So my plan is to DIY a nice floating side table. But before I can move on with what I just told you, I need to take a bunch of measurements, go to Home Depot, and then I can start building some stores. Okay, so one of my closet doors sits slightly lower than the other one. It probably bothers you. It bothers me too. But the other day I spent over an hour, maybe two, trying to fix that closet door. I was adjusting it up and down. I took it completely off. I put it back on. I just think it's broken and I have just surrendered to the gap in the closet. And I'm sorry, it's not that bad. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna add up all my measurements for the wainscoting, figure out how many pieces I'm gonna need, buy a little bit extra in case anything goes wrong. Yeah, also buy the wood for my side table. And if there's extra, I might put a little shelf up there. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna go to Home Depot. It's the time of the day to embrace the Canadian cold. Oh, 
<laughs> um, there's someone walking past my car. Oh my god, can you wipe my back while you're there? I just want to make it known that I actually bought this jacket a couple years ago because it is so depressing in the winter and I genuinely wanted to not only brighten my day but other people's days as well. And if we could all just come together and stop wearing black coats in the winter, you know, it might have some sort of psychological effect on all of us. Probably not, but it was worth a try and I think it's still working. I still look like a lemon. And I cannot believe I have to get back out of my car to wipe the back window again, so. Ugh. Ask me why I came to Home Depot on literally the snowiest day of the year. I am here at Home Depot, <laughs> even in the snow. Probably because I'm about to make something and that always feels so good. <laughs> my plan of attack for my floating side table is gonna be cutting my pieces on 45 degree angles so that each end butts up like a picture frame kind of wood. You can do it in a way where like they sit on top of each other, but I just think it's gonna be a lot cleaner if we do it this way. If you do wanna make this floating side table, all the steps slash dimensions will be on our blog at thesorygirls.com. To assemble the floating side table, I added some wood glue in the inner part of each piece. And then while the glue dried, I added some nails with a nail gun just to hold it all together. Once the whole thing was assembled, I added more nails just to reinforce everything. Since the nails sit inside of the wood, they're easy to cover up with some wood filler. Also, you can use a wood filler to fill in any small gaps. Once it's all dry, it's ready to be sanded and stained. Here I'm just making an additional shelf with the extra wood from the floating side table. Okay, here's my side table. It's all sanded and I just gave it a little dust and now it's ready to be stained. Okay, I did go really like heavy handedly with the stain that I was using only because I wanted a really saturated version of the color. And it's because I have these like dark brown blinds in my room that kind of mimic wood. And I wanted like nuances of that in these pieces of wood. I'm really happy with how these turned out. Okay, goodbye. Look at all the snow. Why did they just yell? Why did they do that? I was gonna write something cute, like see you tomorrow, but I'm just like. <laughs> Good night. Hello. Yes. Good morning. Today, I'm gonna to install all the wainscoting, and I wanna start with my bed, but I gotta get the mattress off, and luckily, I have our new social media assistant here, Baljeet. Hi. <laughs> Everyone say hi. <laughs> Welcome. So yeah, let's go jump into the bedroom. Okay, gotta get this mattress out of here, and I have absolutely nowhere to store it. So, um... God, that's where my glasses are. <laughs> and like all my headbands. <laughs> you know? 
Okay, so I'm gonna use two different types of trim slash molding for both the closet and the bed. One is called chair rail and one's called finger jointed pine. The chair rail I believe is made from MDF and this is obviously made from pine. For my bed, the plan is to do three wainscoting blocks and then each drawer will also get a block as well. I want to start with my middle top piece. So I'm going to find center and mark it on a piece of tape. Since the headboard is 66 inches, I'm going to find 33 inches in. I also mark center on my top piece of trim so I can line it up with the center marking I just made. To ensure everything is even, the best method when installing your trim is to use a guide. Here I'm just using another piece of the chair rail trim, but another option would be cutting a piece of wood to the size of your desired spacing. So I'm not going to bother putting a bottom piece on these boxes because the mattress is going to be there, you're never going to see it, it just kind of felt like a waste. But you just want to make sure that this is long enough that it's going to go all the way down into the mattress. You definitely also don't need to use a nail gun to do this. I'm using it because it's a lot easier and I have one, but you can use just regular nails and a hammer. Just make sure they're thin. For my next two pieces, I just want the inside of this to be on the inside of this leg right here. So I actually think I'm gonna line up the side first. Okay, sorry, not sorry, but Ikea who? Not this bed. Next, I'm gonna put the wainscoting up on the closet and I really see this all coming together. Okay, doors are looking nice. When using a nail gun, it leaves holes where it embeds the head of the nail into the wood, and those are not cute. So I'm just gonna be filling those and any small gaps with some wood filler. Rochelle has joined us um, this afternoon. Hi. And she actually just taught me this really neat trick, which I probably should have Googled, but Rochelle's where if you have a nail that's sticking out, you just take like a dulled down screw or nail or whatever, and if you like hit it on the head, you're not gonna affect the edges of the trim, which like I've been trying to tap them in without this trick, and I've been definitely damaging like the nice edges of the trim. So thank you for that. <laughs> I just wanna share it with you guys too. Once all of our filler is dry, I recommend going in with a sanding sponge. Sanding sponges are great because they resist damage. Since we're working with a lot of like nice edges here, I don't wanna accidentally sand those down. And there's ones that are blocks, or this one has a nice 45 degree angle on it. And right now I'm just giving it a wipe clean to get it ready for my primer paint. Good morning, beautiful people. It's a new day. It's the next day. And I just wanna talk about what's been accomplished so far. I think the bed looks amazing. It's very elegant. It looks 10 times more expensive than it actually is. The color is beautiful. It's perfect. And I also got to thinking why I didn't put any paneling on the footboard of the bed. So before end of day, I asked Rochelle if she could cut down some more boxes for me um, while I worked on a couple other things. So earlier this morning, I put that trim on the bed. It is super easy once you get the hang of it, especially when you're using guides and stuff and gave some areas a second coat of paint and it looks great. I got new hardware for the closet doors and they're these beautiful ornate looking like drawer pulls and I got them secondhand. I don't believe they're vintage. They do say made in Taiwan on the back, but they look vintage. And I think this is gonna complement this bird egg blue <laughs> nicely. 
To install the handles, and if you ever can't mark wherever your holes are with the object itself, it's useful to use a piece of tape and mark the spacing between them. Find center, and then once you mark where you want whatever it is you're installing to land, use center of that surface and line up your piece of tape. Also, a level will always come in handy when installing on flat surfaces. Okay, I think they look beautiful. I love those. Okay, so I want to install my floating side table and my original plan was to use some sort of like floating shelf hardware, but I changed that plan. I've ended up adding a piece of wood to the back and just making pilot holes for my screws to go into the wall. Um, yeah, let's install this. Okay, how do I actually, you're sitting in bed you want to put the cup down, you want it like here. <laughs> that looks awesome. So, I have these blinds, you know, <laughs> just a typical blind. I don't have any plans to switch them out. I don't own this place. I'm not gonna buy a new blind because they actually are quite expensive. But what I am gonna do is just kinda dress up what's already here with a curtain. At the thrift store, I first found this curtain. And I hope you can see. But it has this really cool kind of mid-century modern texture. But I just found it a little bit too white and I guess edging on shower curtain. <laughs> so what I did was take a sheer and this is kind of like a peachy sheer. And I just combined them both together so that this kind of peachy sheer layers over and you still get both textures and I think they're quite beautiful. Before I hang this curtain, to kind of cope, <laughs> cope with the blue trim that I'm not loving, I'm just gonna paint out this blue back to the original wall color. It takes away from the bed frame. The bed frame is so beautiful and I don't want anything really super distracting from it. This will take probably half an hour for me, but only two seconds for you. Ta-da! <laughs> better, debatable, but it just blends into the wall now and I like that a lot better. I'm gonna wait till finals to put the curtains up because the paint's still wet. Next thing I wanna do is get all the shelves hung up on this wall next to the bed. So you saw earlier that I made a little shelf with the extra wood that I had from my floating side table. And I just kind of designed this corner shelf bracket for it to rest on. The bracket is just made with two pieces of two by two. They both have 45 degree angles. Lots of 45 degree angles going on in this room makeover. And that way it will just sit snug in the corner. This way, I, if I ever go to bed with the, my glasses on or a headband, I can place it up here also and not lose it underneath my bed like we saw earlier. Another thing that's going up on this wall are these Floating book shelf things. So these are from Umbra. I actually found three of them on Marketplace. So I'm gonna figure out where I kind of want to arrange all three of them and I'll install all of this. Yay! <laughs> I love that. Okay, it's later in the day, the sun's about to set, and I really wanna get my light fixture up before that happens, obviously. I found this secondhand as well. Pretty much everything in this room for decor is secondhand, but I have this chandelier. I put up a chandelier in my hallway makeover. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you go check it out. But originally I was gonna actually paint the chandelier that I put in the hallway, but I decided not to because it was just so beautiful on its own. So I still wanted an opportunity to have like a monochromatic chandelier and I thought it'd be perfect in this bedroom makeover. So I painted this a neutral color and I really love the way it looks. So the drama, again, her. She's gonna get swapped out with this. Okay, sing it with me. Did I turn off the breaker? Did I turn off the breaker? Did I turn off the breaker? Cause I don't wanna die. Did I add a cause? I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die. And yes, I have turned off the breaker. Shh. 
shaking my head at boob lights. Okay, that little <laughs> magic. Moment of truth, let's see if it works. <gasps> Yay! Oh my gosh. The satisfying moment of any light installation is when it turns on. Yeah, it looks so nice. I have one last thing I want to show you before bed. Great work has been accomplished today. It's really coming together. Circling back to the closet area, I talked about how I wanted to do some integrated lighting. I also mentioned how I can't fit a dresser in this room, so instead of having shelves going all the way up my R doll, I still hope I'm saying that right, I left this kind of like extended space as a cubby, and this is for if I ever want to put something down, like a jewelry or my phone or whatever. So I'm gonna put a puck light here, which I'll link down below. And along the tops of both these closet pieces, <clears throat> closet, whenever I do a peace sign, I literally hold up my pinky. I don't know why, my pinky is just rogue. It's rogue. My boyfriend makes fun of me all the time. Oh, and when I was at Ikea about a week ago, which I will show a little clip from now, the whole lighting, the whole integrated lighting section, which was literally the only reason I was going there, was under construction. So my options were limited, but I am happy with what I came home with, which are these Ledberg. I'm gonna put these LED strips on the top, pointed up at the ceiling. Pointing the lights up at the ceiling is gonna give a really moody and calming effect on the room, and I won't have to rely on my overhead lighting, which is like more of a day light and this is more of like a warm white. Last thing I'm gonna touch on today, and you can feel the warmth of my ambient lighting, <laughs> but another thing from Ikea, feels pretty on brand for the room, but I found this vintage Ikea lamp. It's not available anymore, but you can definitely find it secondhand, and I'm pretty sure Kelsey has one of these. Regardless, I've always wanted one. I mean, I would have liked a fun color, but I kind of like had a neat idea for it. So instead of putting a normal light in there, I have this little, you can get this in a regular bulb. I had to get in a chandelier size. What this light does is it changes colors and it has a little remote. So just to add to the ambient lighting that we already have going on here, I thought this would be cool because it's a white lamp. It will just change colors with the bulb. Oh, oh my God, party. Okay, what about purple? This is not brand new technology. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited. A little green, a little blue for when I'm feeling sad, a little orange for when I'm feeling chill, a little yellow. It's kind of yellow, it's a little green. I don't know how much I'll use all the colors, but I do like having the option. That's all for today. I Tomorrow I'm gonna be styling this whole room and it's all really gonna come together. So I'm excited and I'll see you then. Good morning. Question of the moment is, what button up do I pair with this outfit? Do I do this kind of beigey cream one? Or yellow? The color on this one bothers me sometimes, so I think I'm gonna go with this. I'm really excited about today because it's when everything's gonna start coming together in this room. And I had an easier time at thrift store finding more like plastic things. Like, I don't know, the edging on grandma chic. Like this, for example. I like them, they're cute. But we're almost finished, let's start styling. Here in my little cubby, I find this whole wall super busy. And so this blank space actually, it feels off. <laughs> That's my explanation. What I did is I got a piece of poster art and I want to put it right here. And then I also, I've already organized it, but I just have this like sweet little tree for all my jewelry. It's final touch time.
At the start of this video, I think I tried to narrow down what my style was just a little bit, at least from the last time that I tried to narrow it down. And <laughs> that's kind of a beautiful part about making over your spaces is that you get to figure out what you do like and what you don't like. And overall, I do think this bedroom makeover turned out beautifully. My favorite parts are definitely the DIYs, the side table and the bed and the closet doors. The room overall, it leans a bit classic, but I did find a way to integrate some, you know, more modern elements just to kind of ground it all. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you do enjoy room makeovers like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we do room makeovers on this channel on the regular. But next week's not a room makeover challenge. Actually, here's a sneak peek of what's coming next week. Thank you guys. Bye. We <laughs> revealed our very unsightly storage room. Hey guys, welcome to my crib. Or maybe this is an episode of Porters, I don't know. <laughs> Ouch. I need the guys to just edit in like a bunch of horror movie sound effects. It's so bad, it's so bad. The only way through it is to get to it. <laughs>